and uh, accounting for construction contract revenues. Uh, with us today, we also have Associate Professor Pramila. She is the uh, Deputy Head of Division here at, in MBS for Accounting Division. And she teaches Audit and Assurance, uh, which is you know, a course that uh, teaches our students how to check whether the financial statements prepared by organization are true and fair in terms of uh, the numbers and the information that is given to uh, users of those financial statements. And I'm also very honored today to have Mr. Daniel Chu. He's our alumnus uh, who graduated from the Bachelor of Accountancy uh, years ago. Uh, he's really successful in his career, has taken on uh, many different roles in uh, accounting firms as well as in commercial organization. Um, I shall have let him uh, introduce more about himself uh, to the audience. Mr. Daniel? All right, thank you. Right, so my name is Daniel Chu. Right, so I actually have been kind of working quite a fair bit right, kind of in the commercial firm. And then of course before that was with the accounting firm. And I actually graduated like probably more than 26 years, 27 years ago from NTU Accountancy. And then of course I'm uh, after that working for a while also took on my MBA with INSEAD and Wharton Business School. So I'm also kind of qualified accredited tax advisor, charter accountant for Singapore and CPA for Australia. So I'm very fortunate to be able to kind of work with a number of the best employers in the world. Right? Kind of a big four accounting firm, Chevron, Johnson & Johnson, and Avago, who is that's no, now known as Broadcom, and now working with Shell. So uh, in my work, actually, I focus a lot in, in the, probably in the last 25 years or so, a lot into like, taxation, international tax structuring, planning, M&A, operation, tax operations, transfer pricing. And these topics just kind of become much more um, important right, in the current years. As some of you may really know also, right, with the kind of evolution and the type of global minimum tax that kind of the governments are looking across right, from OECD perspective. And actually outside work, I do, um, I'm also a national serviceman. I right, kind of serve the nation ever, um, as a Singaporean. And then, you, as you probably have seen on the screen, I'm also married. And actually, with kids that are no longer that young, one actually graduated from N NTU Accountancy last year, now working with Ernst Young, also in taxation. Second one is actually doing the first year accountancy, also in NTU. And the third one is in this secondary three. Okay. Thank you, Daniel, for that uh, wonderful introduction. Um, I'm going to take the next few minutes just to give you an overview of our Bachelor of Accountancy program here at NBS. Now, if you look at the slides, uh, we offer a degree in accountancy, but I just want to highlight that it is more than a degree in accountancy. Uh, we call it degree in accountancy plus. Uh, what I mean by that is that uh, beside the basic degree that you can pursue here at the Nyon Business School, you can also choose from 40 different minors uh, offered by different schools within the uh, NTU uh, group of colleges. For example, you can take a minor in uh, environmental sustainability. You can take a minor in strategic communication. You can even take a minor in music if that's what you desire. Uh, beside these minors offered by different schools within NTU, uh, the business school itself also offers two specialized minors, one in digitalization and data analytics, and the other in international trading. Now, these two minors will further hone your skills in these specific areas so that you will be really work ready when you go out and pursue your career after you have graduated. Um, beside these minors, we also have work study degree programs where you can spend a semester with an organization um, learning and working there at the same time. Uh, the organization that we partner with includes the Big Four as well as a few other uh, financial institutions. Beside the work-study degree program, as well as the minor, you can also pursue a second major in, in entrepreneurship. Now, this second major will require you to take more courses than if you are pursuing a minor, uh, which you might have to spend an additional semester um, in order for you to fulfill the criteria. However, uh, because of the flexibility of our program, uh, if you choose to overload in some of the semester, you can actually finish the second major in three years as well, which is uh, what our 
basic degree in accountancy um, require you to do. It's just a three-year program, unlike other uh, programs offered by universities elsewhere in Singapore. Uh, we also offer two double degrees that combine the Bachelor of Accountancy uh, with a degree in business, as well as a degree in data science and AI. Now, these two double degrees are by application. So if you are really interested, please take a look at some of the information that we have on these two double degrees uh, on our website. Now, just very briefly, the curriculum for our accounting degree here at MBS. Um, when you come in the first and second year, you will be taking courses in what we call the interdisciplinary collaborative curriculum. I'll touch a little bit more about ICC courses in just a while. You will also pursue a professional attachment at the end of your first year. And beside accounting, we will also train you in different business functions. So you'll be exposed to business functions such as marketing, finance. You will also be trained in uh, digital skills, in programming. So we teach R as well as a Python in our IT courses. You will also be taught communication skills. Uh, in terms of business communication. And in addition, we of course uh, ground you very strongly in accounting topics and accounting skills. So you'll take courses in financial reporting, in audit and assurance, um, in AIS or accounting information system, as well as in tax and risk management. Now beyond these core courses that you are supposed to take, you also have a choice uh, to pursue what we call broadening and deepening electives. Now, these electives modules will allow you to pursue a minor, which I've talked about in the previous slide, allow you to pursue a major, a second major. And this minor can also allow you to engage in the work-study degree program if you choose to do so. At NTU, and specifically at Nyon Business School, it's not just about studying. We also encourage you to engage in co-curricular learning, so to be involved in activities with the student clubs, in the halls, and so on. So you can see that we give you a holistic education that will put you uh, really work ready when you go out to pursue your career. As mentioned, I'll talk a little bit about the ICC courses. Uh, this is interdisciplinary in a sense that you will be reading these courses with students from uh, other colleges. So you will be sitting in the same class with the engineers, with the students from the humanities, with students from um, sport science, with students from other colleges, so that you will be exposed to different perspectives. And why is that important? Because um, the world is increasingly becoming uncertain, increasingly becoming digitalized, and increasingly becoming uh, full of issues that have to be tackled, not by um, someone from a specialized field, but by a group or a team of people with different skill sets. Now, for example, you'll be taking three courses on the grand challenges that face the world. Sustainability, healthy living, and science and technology. For issues such as sustainability, uh, the accountant by themselves cannot save the world. You have to work with the scientists, you have to work with the engineers, to come up with a plan that will uh, make the world a better place by reducing carbon emission. On top of that, three courses that focus on grand challenges, you'll be also taking courses in skills that are transferable uh, beyond accounting. You'll be learning communication skills. You'll be learning how to deal with the digital world. You'll be learning ethics, which is very important because that's what defines you when you go out to pursue a career. You'll also be um, taking courses that will prepare you to be workforce ready in our career and entrepreneurship development course. Now, a little bit on our programs. Uh, I just want to emphasize that our basic accounting degree is a single degree program that will only take you three years to complete and comes with direct honors. Similarly, the double degree for accounting and business will take you just four years. For our double degree in accounting and data science, uh, that will take you four and a half years. Now this is the um, normal period which you can complete the degree, but because we are flexible, 
in terms of how we set up our courses, you can actually take longer or shorter if you want to. For example, some of our students in our single degree actually take one more semester to pursue an extended internship and therefore graduate in three and a half years. So the flexibility afforded by our program uh, is really something that you should consider when you compare NTU with the other universities elsewhere. Now in terms of the employment opportunities that you have once you graduate, uh, as you can see on this slide, these are the data from the latest graduate employment survey that just came out last week. In terms of our double degree students in accounting and business, you can see that 99.2% found, found jobs within six months of graduation. In terms of our single degree, it's 977 So even in these uncertain times with the pandemic, you can see that our students are able to find employment when they graduate. This suggests that our students are attractive to employers, they are resilient, and they are able to contribute back to society when they complete their degree. Where do our students go in terms of the employers? As you can see on this slide, uh, it's wide ranging. We have students going to the big four. We have students going to financial institutions, whether it be foreign banks like UBS or local banks like DBS. We have also students going to the commercial sector, um, for example, Johnson & Johnson, and also in the tech field, right, like Shopee. So that finished my quick overview of our um, Bachelor of Accountancy degree here. And we will continue with this session by answering your questions that you might have. So feel free to post the question on Slido, and we'll do our best to go through as many as possible. Okay, thanks, Yen, and uh, thanks, Daniel. So before we start off with today, maybe it'll be good for you to share with us as to why you decided to pursue a BAC degree way back 25 years ago, as you said. Yeah. Okay, sure. Well, actually, I probably make the decision much earlier than that, right? mm -hmm. because I have to go through national service and right. stuff like that, and I actually made a decision after I completed my A level. And at that time, very simplistic thinking, just three key criteria. Number one, it has to be something local, because I come from a poor family. Right? I have to finance my own study, so I can't afford overseas. And secondly, right, it has, I mean, I'm interested in finance as a career. Right, so I do believe that well, there are a lot of power there. Right, kind of, it will actually you know, make a lot of difference. Right, so that is something that I want to do. And third, I want to choose a course at a university that is prestigious, that is demanding, that will actually help me to be the best that I can be. So that was how I started. And actually, NTU, accountancy course, at the time fit all three criteria. But of course, now looking back, right, kind of with the years of experience behind me, I will probably have a kind of slightly different kind of criteria, but still three criteria. Right? And one will be finance as a career. Mm -hmm. Second, in terms of my personality and my driver. And third, right, in terms of what the accountancy course at NTU can really offer me. So looking at the finance as a career, I believe that well, finance is at the heart of every organization. Right? It's just like, as I say, the heart is really the heart. Well, you enable the blood to flow through different parts of our body. So just like the, how the financial consideration pump through, right? whether it's the supply chain department, business department, or yeah, every department, right? they will actually shape the organizational behavior, how people make decisions, the risk appetite. So finance is at the heart there and enable all this to happen. So I do see right now it's really important for us, for me, and since I'm really interested in finance as a career, that is the kind of one of the best ways it's mm -hmm. possible to go. Second, in terms of in personal interest and motivation, I like to be in the position of a driver's seat. I like to be in control. I like to make the difference. And at the same time, I like to do a variety of things. I can't really kind of stand like kind of doing the routine things year in, year out. So being in the finance actually enabled me to take on a variety of challenges. And just like the, we say, blood flow through different parts of the body, mm -hmm. right? So we would actually, you know, as in finance, I'll interact with different stakeholders, right? Manage different challenges, right? So it will never be routine for me. So that's why I enjoy kind of the, the challenge and the variety that it offer. And thirdly, in terms of, well, NTU accountancy, I do see that this is a great place that will really enhance, right? My, what I call the mastery, personal mastery, people mastery and professional mastery. 
right? Because the course itself is so rigor, right? So in the personal mastery space, it really kind of helped me build my resilience, discipline, right? Time management, stress management, etc. So there's no way you can kind of try to kind of get through the course and expect a great results without actually kind of working on your personal mastery. Second, people mastery, right? Through the coursework, there will be a lot of team working required. And at the same time, right, there'll be also a lot of negotiation, right, that will kind of take place, right? Kind of, yeah, you could be negotiating a course mate or kind of negotiating a professor, etc. And you need to also kind of exercise your leadership, right, in that space to make things happen. Because not all your classmates or project mates are as motivated as you. So how do you get things moving? So that will actually kind of really enhance the people mastery, right, aspects of it. And then third, professional mastery. As Yan He has kind of shared, right? You actually cover a lot, right? Technical aspects, the non-technical aspects. Technical aspects, you actually kind of go through accounting, financial management, economics, law, etc. But there are also very important non-technical aspects that are critical to succeed, right? Whether it's communication skills or whether in terms of presentation, yeah, critical thinking, right? Which is even more important, especially in this era of change. Mm. Right? Things just keep changing. Right, knowledge you acquire will be stagnant, but the skill set, the critical thinking, right, will enable you to be able to respond, correct, and kind of to the changes and thinking ahead, right, and enable you to be ahead of your competition. So I do believe that NTO currency well, will help prepare. Uh, actually, it has prepared me well, right, to enhance my personal mastery, people mastery, and also professional mastery. So coming back together again. This will still be the same decision I make, but using different criteria. Okay, so let's just pick up a point on uh, what Daniel said, right? Uh, personal mastery, right? I think that's also related to some of the questions that we have been having on the slide. Though um, they're asking, NTU has a three-year accountancy program, right? Is it you know, very tough to get through compared to other universities that have a four-year program? Uh, is it something that they can achieve in three years? Is it too hard for them? Should they go to a four-year program and have an easier time? Uh, perhaps, Prem, you want to have to take on that question. So I think the three-year program is the distinguishing feature of our program. It's a highly efficient program. And uh, we do not compromise on content, etc., because we are accredited by all the professional bodies, So, which means we meet their requirements. And um, so it's... Um, but at the same time, as Yen He shared earlier, it does give you the flexibility to either choose a three-and-a-half or four-year program if you so wish to do all right so the choice is up to you and you can use the time to do your internships or take a leave of absence to do a startup or some social enterprise so the in a sense the world is your limit right whatever you want to do it is possible so the three year is not compressed um, it's highly efficient program and we have a long history we actually started from NUS and then we have now then moved to NTU and all along we've been having a three-year program so during and we have established a reputation in the market for producing graduates who are able to tackle the issues of the day yeah. and just to add on to that in terms of uh, personal mastery uh, we do have mentor ring program here at MBS and we do have mentors, they are alumni like Daniel himself, uh, who will come and talk to our students and guide them along in their study journey as well as beyond. And these mentors will provide the necessary advice and guidance uh, to help you obtain your personal mastery in terms of how you conduct yourself, either while you're still at MBS and even beyond when you go out to work. So that's one of the attractive features that we have here at MBS. Um, as a year one student, you can sign on to a six-month mentorship program and beyond the first year, there are also other mentorship programs that you sign on to that will allow you to interact consistently throughout your education here at MBS with mentors that will guide and lead you along. I think to add on to what Yen is saying, uh, our career services team is a dedicated team for NBS students. So which means that, you know, anytime you face any issues in terms of resume writing or how to approach uh, a particular job opportunity, etc., the career services office is there to lend you their helping hand. Right? So, and this, not all uh, schools in NTU can uh, boast of this feature. So we do have the career services office as well to guide you in your journey. Okay. Um, going to Daniel's second point, people, people mastery, right? 
So uh, I just want to point out that um, there might be some misconception in terms of how NTU or specifically MBS uh, teach in terms of the courses that we have here. Uh, we no longer have big lectures and tutorials for, I would say, almost all our courses here at MBS. Rather, our classes are conducted in seminar uh, fashion. So you come into a class with about 40 to 45 students. You sit in groups. And you sit in groups because you are going to work in groups or in teams throughout the semester. So it's very important uh, to work in teams so that you will brush up on your teamwork skills. You will brush up on your leadership skills because you have to manage your team as well. And you will brush up on your project management skills because you'll be involved in several projects throughout the semester. So in our pedagogy approach, we make sure that you master the skills of working in teams and leading teams. Um, in addition, um, there are also other opportunities for you to work in teams outside of the courses. Uh, Daniel, for example, uh, didn't focus just on his academic studies while he's here at MBS. Uh, in fact, he's heavily involved in student activities and took on leadership roles in those student activities. Daniel, would you like to share some of these activities that you were involved with while you're at MBS? Sure, definitely. Yeah. Thank you, Yen. Indeed, I think this, uh, for I believe that to really kind of make the best out of the campus life is really beyond academics. There's a lot of non-academic aspect attached to it. Mm -hmm. So during my university days, I was actually also the union president right, for the students union, which actually kind of takes up at least 40 hours of my time right, during every week. So just kind of to put things in perspective, right, 40 hours is a regular full-time employee, nine to, uh, nine to six hour work, Monday to Friday. So that's on top of meeting the rigor of the accountancy program. Right? So I'll spend that hours. And because actually I come from a poor family, so I have to spend kind of time working part-time to finance my studies. And at the same time, I'm also dating. Right? Uh, yeah, so my girlfriend at that time, and we just celebrated our 27 year wedding anniversary this month. Congratulations. Yeah, so, Congratulations. Yeah, and also serve in the church and also spending time keeping fit, right? Exercising, right? To make sure that I'm fit, right? In all dimensions. So actually to make that happen, right? As you really kind of drive me, right? In terms of the personal mastery space, right? And at the same time, right? You need to be effective working in groups. Yeah, and then working as in a union, right? I need to negotiate quite a fair bit, especially with the presidents of the constituency or the major clubs, the halls, etc. Because there are always some perceived conflict of interest. Mm -hmm. I need to work with the student affair office, negotiate with them. So actually that really kind of enhanced a lot, right? kind of my own personal resilience and people mastery skills. And that actually make a difference to my career. Because mm -hmm. in a different stage of career, right? there'll be ups and downs. At the same time, some career will be much more demanding than others. Say for instance, when I work for this um, high-tech company, Right. So very demanding, but pay, pay you really well. Yeah. So within the very first month that I work for the company, right, when I'm still totally new, I'm actually required to do the first um, tax reporting right, to the US stock exchange. Right, the, they get listed. So how it works is that, well, that kind of throughout the, right, throughout the, I have to fly to Los Angeles right, with my boss, 14 hour flight. And throughout the flight, we're just working through nonstop. Only maybe like kind of with one hour nap, and then just kind of working side by side each other right, in economy class. Right? That's kind of how I work on it. Once we reached our hotel, right, that was like middle of the night, about 2 a.m. We put down everything, wash our face, get into office, right? reach the office, right, 2 plus, work until like 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning. Go back, take a nap, go back to office 7, 9, 9 a.m. and continue, right, kind of get going. So that kind of experience, like kind of going through like how MBS and also then subsequently in the big four, etc. How really kind of prepare and step up my resilience that enable me to continue to thrive and enjoy my work. Mm. Yeah, but I think without the rigor of the MBS, I think it will probably be a different story. Yeah. So uh, overall, I, I, I think that I kind of with the MBS program, with the campus life and student life, I think you, that can prepare us well. But of course, you have to mm. put in a lot. Right? The more you mm. give, the more you receive. I guess in your career as well, you have been traveling a lot. You have been stationed in India as well as in Nigeria. So did the NBS uh, curriculum and NBS life prepare you for these overseas stints to mm. in a different culture and setting, etc.? Yeah. Yeah. I will say 
to a good extent, yes, especially from a foundational perspective, mm. right? Kind of provide me the foundation, right? From a personal mastery, people mastery, and professional mastery space. But maybe going back to the fundamental, these are the developing countries, right? That I've been to, whether it's Nigeria or India, and the critical success factors I see there are what I characterize as three C, right? First, you need competency. Because a lot of time, right, they struggle with competency. So for you to succeed, you need to be very competent. And secondly, right, it's really about that um, consistency. Right? Sometimes they do it well, sometimes they don't do it well. But if for someone who is competent and keep doing it well, right, every time, any time, that will be a key success factor. And third is also the confidence. And because a lot of times people in the developing country, they may not have seen things done in a certain way. So we need to kind of bring with us that kind of confidence that can make that difference and then kind of instill confidence and bring people with you along, right? To kind of mm. towards that objective. And I do see that actually MBS and also my accounting and commercial experience does help provide with that. But some things will not be direct. Say for example, right in Nigeria, it's very common, right? Kind of Whenever, kind of when, say fl from flying into the country, right, you meet with the immigration officer, customs officer, anti-narcotics <laughs> officer, right, and the quarantine officer. Right, everybody will be very warm. Was, and even the policemen, you see a lot of policemen and soldiers with the guns on their hand. Mm -hmm. right, they will greet you. Good day, my brother. How are you doing? Then without you responding, the second thing they ask you, what do you have for me today? <laughs> right. So, then, I mean, the values that I acquire, right? Yes. I believe that while well, we need to have integrity. So I will, even though we have been helping the needy, the underprivileged, but I'm not prepared to give any single cent to encourage bad behavior or to count or to give a bribe just to make things faster. So then how MBS kind of training kind of kick in, right? It's not just about the integrity. It's also about the creativity. How do you respond to that? Most of my expat colleagues, right, under those situations, they'll just pay like maybe a few dollars, like count ten dollars or whatever, just to get on with it. But no, for for me, right, in the throughout the last three few years, we have never paid a single cent. So the way I responded is, great blessing to you, right? So you ask for something, I give you great blessing. Yeah. So most actually, like 60, 70 percent of them, they look at you this wow, they say okay, all right, go, right, they will let you go. But there are people who will say, ah, okay, beyond great blessing, what would you give to me? I say, well, I serve in the church. I pray for you. I can pray for our family. <laughs> and they are quite religious. Right? So that also takes care right, the bulk of the rest of the people. So having that integrity and creativity, I think is important. But of course, you may not get it directly in the course. Right? But in the, along the way, right, kind of you will acquire these skills right, as part of the, the training. So as we hear from Daniel, you can see that he has a lot of overseas exposure uh, during his career. And we have a question on the slide that says, how does uh, MBS aid its students who wish to settle overseas after their degree? Uh, so in MBS itself, we already give you the opportunities to go overseas while you are doing your study by our exchange programs as well as our in overseas internship programs. So we have lots of agreement with universities worldwide where you can choose to spend a semester with those universities and get to learn in a different environment and be more comfortable in a multicultural environment. Right? Um, also linked to what Dana has said in terms of ethics. Uh, as you can see, as our ICC courses does has a specific course that deal with ethics. Right? And it's not just being in class where you learn ethics. It's also learning from experienced people like Daniel himself. And that's where our mentorship program also kick in. Right? So these are some of the ways that we will help you uh, deal with living overseas and working overseas once you graduate. And um, to add on, I think we are accredited by AACSB as well as ICWIS, which means that um, universities in the US as well as workplaces, they will know that you're coming from a university that is an accredited university, mm -hmm. uh, likewise in Europe as well. So, which means in terms of portability, that's there as well. Yeah. Right. Uh, again, going to the slide question that we see here, uh, the, question, the first question out there is, are accountancy grads able to go into external audit? Uh, let, let me take a first uh, 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 try at this question. 
Uh, the answer is yes. Right? In fact, uh, 60, about 60% of our accounting graduate joined the accounting or audit firms, so the big four as well as second tier firms. Um, but that's not the only career choice. Right? A lot, the other 40% of our students go into the commercial sector, like J and, uh, Johnson & Johnson, they go into Shopee, they go into also the governmental sector, they join government agency like EDP um, and also uh, Enterprise Singapore. So you can see that the career opportunities that accounting grad has is, I would say, unlimited. Right? It depends on what skill set you can bring to the organization uh, that you're going to join. And organizations out there are very receptive to our graduates because they are trained holistically. They are trained not just to be good in accounting, which they are extremely good at, but also in other aspects, um, in terms of people skills, in terms of communication skills, in terms of just being aware of who they are, right, with respect to their position uh, in the organization they work with, as well as the society as a whole. Uh, Prem, you want to add anything to that? Yes, yeah, so um, I think when we look at the accountancy degree, it actually paves you the pathway to two things. One is that it's a very versatile degree, so which means that once you take an accountancy degree, you can actually venture into other areas. You can become a successful entrepreneur, or you can go into marketing, HR services, etc., but with that finance background, all right? So it gives you that versatility. Number two, it's also a pathway to professional qualification. So if you pursue further, you can become a chartered accountant and be a respected person in society for the role that you play there. So it is both these aspects and I think our students therefore as Yeni has pointed out have gone into multiple roles in the sky is the limit in that sense so you can go into uh, the banking sector or there are people who have joined um, the fintech firms etc. So it's, uh, it's multiple opportunities that is available to you beyond audit and accounting per se, right? Yep, and yep, maybe yep. Daniel would like to add something. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I think all this, what you shared, really resonate with me. But I kind of fundamentally believe accountancy degree actually will kind of give you probably one of the broadest range of career options that's possible. Yep. Anything that is, doesn't require a professional degree like doctor yes, or, med, or, or like kind of law engineer, I think you can run it right with your accountancy mm -hmm. degree. And it actually goes into various aspects. Accounting firm is a good example. It's not just about external audit. You know, kind of people like myself go into taxation or even consulting, mm. right? Um, forensic, etc. Right? Kind of within the accounting firm itself. Mm. But beyond that, right, there are really also consulting firm that will look out for accountancy grad. I remember during my time, right, a fellow classmate who also got first class and dean's list. Right, both of us, we get it. Right, I joined a big four, big five at the time. Right? He took on a consulting job and his pay is like four to five times higher than compared to me. Right? I still remember that very clearly. <laughs> right? So consulting is always a possibility. Yes. Right? And then beyond that, right, kind of the banks, right, MNCs, a number of them, right, they actually will have management associate program, right, even for like, whether it's like Citibank or Shell, etc. That will actually, they will also kind of be, the door will also be open. That will kind of put you through. If you are selected, right, you will be put through a number of our portfolio or the job roles every six months or nine months, right? even including probably um, opportunities to work overseas. And after a period of two to three years, depending on the company, then depending on the organization need and also your personal interest and strength, then you then confirm what is the probably more permanent position that you take on in the bank or in the MNC itself. And of course, there's this gov the governments and mm -hmm. SMEs or even kind of coming back and teach right, kind of weather, you know, in the various settings. So there's really a wide range of career options. I think the ultimate question is that or how much have you put in during the course? Right? Because you need to have the right track record, right? academic, non-academic. And how much are you prepared right, to invest in your career? Right? Because if you want a fast track, a kind of very exciting career, then you need to be able to pay the price for it. Right? Otherwise, you may kind of always kind of go for probably a more stable job. But I think the course will give us that flexibility. 
I think to um, also share at this point in time about our internship programs mm -hmm. because besides the professional attachment program which Yeni highlighted earlier which is compulsory 10-week attachment you do have and this is done at the end of year one which means after year one for every semester break you do have an opportunity to venture out to other internships and we do have students who do multiple internships three or four internships sometimes in marketing HR related activities as well and we also now have the work study degree programs which is a uh, 35 week long attachment with an organization so all this helps you to also make a decision as to what's your cup of tea hmm. right? is this what I want or not right. so uh, related to the conversation that we have here is uh, as they pointed out the third thing right professional development right so in a sense that a accounting degree will get you good jobs an accounting degree will open career choices for you and at MBS, we make sure that you are professionally developed to handle um, new situations that comes about in the business world. For example, in terms of digitalization, right, the world is becoming increasingly digital. And you can see that at MBS, we have evolved our program as well to make sure that our graduates are digital ready. So in our core programs, we do run you through um, programming languages like R and Python, as I mentioned. We do run you through also projects and topics that require you to use those tools to make good decisions because ultimately the tools are there but it is how you use the tools that matter and the key thing is using the tools to make good business decisions so our courses will equip you with those critical thinking as well as creative thinking skills that Daniel mentioned right? And to highlight, we have a double degree in Bachelor of Accountancy and Data Science. This degree is rigorous. We attract the best students into this double degree. And this degree will equip you to work either in the IT field, in the accounting field, or a blend of these two fields in various organizations. Uh, if you think that a double degree might be a little bit too much for you because it does take four and a half years. We also have the minor in digitalization and data analytics. That will also equip you with necessary skills to make yourself valuable in whatever career uh, choices you make. So in terms of the differences between the minor and the double degree, it's just a matter of that. How much you want to go into it, as Daniel has mentioned, how much you want to learn about this new field and how much you think you want to exercise some of these skills and knowledge that you will get uh, by learning these new skills. So um, Daniel, I just hope you can also share with us your experience with how digitalization has affected your organization and perhaps how it has affected how you work. Sure, yeah. Yeah, thanks. I'll be happy to share that. Because mm. I think digitalization indeed has Im impacted and changed many aspects of the organization. If we just kind of focus on the finance aspect, but yeah. right, you see, I mean, some major trends that we need to kind of look out for, and th those are trends that will not change, like moving of jobs, right, from high cost location, like the European region or the US region, or even some Asian region, right, to low cost location that have a very good talent pool, like India, right, or Poland, or Philippines. So that movement of jobs by MNCs, right? They, this is what we call offshoring. It's really happening for the last 12 to 15 years. Yeah. So it is happening and this is like really a precursor, right? To the digitalization and also the, the AI. And I'll explain a bit more, right? So with this moving of jobs, right? It's critical because it actually enhanced the competitiveness of the organization for the same job that is done, say, in UK. Right, but if I get it done in India, Chennai, right, it probably costs only 20%. So long as I can make it sustainable, right, such that well, whenever there's staff turnover, right, we'll be able to kind of keep the operations going. But more importantly, right, because we, as we kind of bring the operations together in a single location rather than spreading out across, you actually learn from each other. You learn from the best practices. Right? You simplify, you standardize the process. Right? Because once you standardize the process, that is when the digitalization will kick in. Right? So, and then digitalization AI will then be able to drive like right, three key areas. 
One is to improve management insight or even foresight that will help management make better decisions through the use of digital tools, etc. Secondly, you actually can enhance the operational efficiency, deliver huge savings, right? So, and then you will kind of continue to drive down the cost and make the company more competitive. Third, you actually also enhance and reduce the cost for compliance and the risk of compliance. And in our current world, compliance just become more and more costly, but become more and more crucial. That will impact the business license to operate. So when we look at the digitalization and AI, right, you look at the moving of jobs to low cost location, all this will be affecting right, all of us, especially in Singapore, the high cost location. You cannot stop the jobs from going away. You will not be able to stop some jobs being lost to AI. But what you can do that is within your influence, right? Is there are three, I'll say three legged stool, three things that you can focus on. First, you really need to understand the business, understand the financial requirements, right? Because with that, right, then you can actually kind of better how kind of really support the business. And beyond that, right, that so that space is really more of the professional mastery. But then the second aspect is about building the trust and collaboration with your stakeholders. Right? Stakeholders, whether in the IT space or um, in the finance or in, let's say, in the um, supply chain, etc. You need to be able to build that trust, build that relationship that will actually help enhance your understanding and also meet that requirement. At the end of it, the third key factor is really about the digital saving, saviness. Right? Do you know, you need to understand how can I use this data science, analytics and AI to really kind of address the organizational challenge and then also the problem statement. Then by working together right, with your stakeholders, you can then properly identify and frame right, the solution that will be empowered or enabled by AI and also by, um, I mean, by the data analytics. And it's not just about framing it, it's really working with them to really kind of develop a solution. At the end, probably is what we call a rewiring. You need to rewire the entire organization. Huge work, right? That before you can deliver the solution, right? That will give you that competitive advantage and also address the, the organizational challenge or problem statement. This cannot be replaced, right? By robots, cannot be replaced by AI, right? But if you are properly equipped, right? With a, say a bigger cost like accountancy, right? I think you'll be in a great position to acquire right, that knowledge, to appreciate the business, understanding the finance, finance requirements, able to build trust, communication with your stakeholders, and with the double degree or the minor in AI, or, or sorry, in the data analytics, etc. That will actually kind of help you better appreciate and pull everything together. And that is where you can add significant value and not at risk of being replaced. Okay. Yeah, so, um I just want to go back to one of the questions on the slide. It says, uh, do, will I lose out if I do not do a minor or a double degree, right? Uh, I think the more important question you have to ask yourself uh, is, are you interested? Do you have the passion for those topics in the minor or in the major or in the double degree? Uh, it's less about whether you are placed well, but it's more about um, what you want to learn at, when you're at the Nyan Business School. And that will take you through what you want to choose to read while you are here. So think about your passion, what skill set you need that you think you do not yet have, and that will better inform your choice of which minor to choose or which double degree to choose, rather than uh, think about what job placement you're going to have in the future. Right? Um, I'm going to kind of wrap up this session because it's almost time by asking Daniel uh, one last question. Because he talks about um, personal development, he talks about people development, talks about professional development. At MBS, uh, we definitely will be able to equip you in terms of these three key aspects of building up your skills. Uh, to wrap it up, I want to hear from Daniel because he is a student here um, some years back. I want to hear from him in terms of what his most memorable experience is while he is studying at the Nayang Business School. Okay, great, so. thanks. Very happy to share that. Yeah. So actually, during my second year in the accountancy, I actually kind of was campaigning as a um, student union representative right, for NBS. Right? So thankfully, I was also kind of selected and I was being successful. And with that, right, then the next step is 
what office should I pick up within the student union executive committee? Mm -hmm. So that will actually be determined by the student council that are formed by the presidents of the major constituent clubs, right? And, and the non-academic club and academic club. So actually it was memorable because actually it takes us three nights of rally debating challenges, scrutiny by the student council. I put forward myself as a public relations officer in the beginning. So first night, it lasts from like 8 p.m. to 2 a.m. Second night, 8 p.m. to 12 midnight. Third night, 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. At the end of the third night, the student council decide, okay, Daniel Chu, you will be the president right, of the union. <laughs> well, totally unexpected by a Saturday. And it's probably the best decision, one of the best decisions I've made in my life. Right? And just giving an example, right? because that same year, the Singapore government announced that they will actually increase the fee by reducing the subsidies right, to the university students. Coming from poor family, I know that will be a great financial burden. So I feel a lot for it. So I actually kind of met up with the Minister of Education at that time, Mr. Liu Xuan, and secure from him a dollar-to-dollar -dollar matching to start up a student's fund. Right? Mm -hmm. So the government agreed that they will actually match up to a million dollars for us to start this student's fund to support the financial needy students. So then the next thing is, well, that time there's no internet, no crowdfunding. So it's really laborious fundraising activities, right? So we get kind of lined up with people from like, kind of say the president, Ong Ding Chong, and then Minister of Education, um, Education Lee Yok, Mr. Lee Yok Swan, mm. Minister of National Development, Lim Hung Kiang, and also yeah, the Associate Professor Ho Pingyi was then the Senior Minister of State. And also the support from the business associations, the media, why right? we run like kind of, the, we break the first Guinness World Record probably for the NTU, organizing 1,601 students lined up, right? And then kind of march in tandem, right? Forward 30 steps and then create the history as a fundraising activities. Then we launched the first NTU, uh, NTU um, transit link card, which is equivalent, right? To the, mm -hmm. to the easy, um, easy link today, right? So then run the charity concert. And over a period of six months, right, just before I graduated from university, we really raised a few hundred thousand dollars through all this. And my successor you know, continued the effort. And my successor also includes Mr. Zaki Muhammad, who is currently mm -hmm. right, the minister, senior minister of state for defense and manpower. So eventually it was kind of completed. Right? And the students fund today, they are still benefiting others. Yeah, so I'm very grateful to MBS for giving me this opportunity to be able to serve. And these are really life transforming experience for me that I'll change my, uh, mm. enhance my skill set, right? People, personal and profession. Less professional, but probably the people and the personal space. Sure. Yeah, we definitely need all three to be well developed. To yes. be as successful as Daniel is, uh, he graduated from MBS, was trained here, trained well here, had a successful career. And that's what we hope for all of you if you do come into the Nanyang Business School to pursue the Bachelor of Accountancy degree. So we have tried to go through as many questions as we have. I hope that we have answered most of those questions and I appreciate your listening to us today. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Choose MBS because it empowers you to be your best. Because it helps to discover a better you for the future that you dream of. Basically, to find yourself and to learn how you can make an impact in this world. Come to MBS to experience a different you. See you at MBS. See you at MBS. See you at MBS. See you at MBS. I look forward to seeing you at MBS.